Hi, I'm Liz with Liz's Crafts, and today we will be DIYing with glass rounds. Now, these rounds were given to me, so I feel like I need to use them. So we're going to start off with a candle holder. So I have uh, this glass piece that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to be using some E6000 glue. And these glass rounds, they're flat on the back side, and these are clear with some white swirls in them. And I'm just going to take a toothpick here to get my glue out, and then I'm just going to put it on the back of the glass round. And then I'm going to add it to the glass. So uh, this is one of those, uh, I guess they call it a vase or something in the area where the vases are in Dollar Tree. So I'm just putting the E6000 on the back of it and then adding it to the glass piece. And it does make these pretty heavy once you get them all on there. And I didn't want to use hot glue because I've tried hot glue before with these kind of glass pieces and they fall off after a while. So I'm just adding these around the top portion of the glass for the first row. And again, I find it easier just to use a toothpick with the E6000 glue. However, I do recommend, instead of using just E6000, to use the E6000 and the hot glue. So you put E6000 on one uh, portion of the back of the glass piece and uh, then put <clears throat> your hot glue on the other side so they don't mix. And the reason being is, and you'll see later, that uh, these do fall off before they dry. And then we have to put tape around it to hold it on. So to avoid this, just use hot glue and E6000. And you can kind of see how I think that one has slid down a little bit, but there's the first ring around it. Now for the second ring, we're just going to place these in between where these other ones are. And you'll see that right there, so in between those. And we're going to continue around the glass or vase. And I have to say, this E6000 glue, ugh, the smell. Mm. You want to use it in a well-ventilated area. And you might want to wear a mask while you're doing this. So I'm just placing the second row in between the ones on the first row. Rolling away. So there's two rows. And then when you start your third row, you're going to do it the same way, just in between where two of them meet. There's the third row. So 
So you just continue in this manner until you have your face covered. So this is the fourth row. And now we're going to start with the fifth row. Now uh, Dollar Tree does sell these flat back um, glass pieces. Actually in the same area where they have their vases. So you just continue around until you have filled in with all your glass pieces on your vase. So five rows total. just pressing these down because they do want to slide a little bit because you know it takes a while for the E6000 glue to dry. You wouldn't have to do this if uh, you were and see that one fell off if you were using the hot glue along with the E6000. And you'll see I get smarter in uh, the other videos, the other DIYs coming up and I use both glues. So what I did to keep the uh, glass pieces on, and I thought this one had come off, but it didn't, um, was to add some masking tape to it. And you see how those kind of shifted down. So I had to press those back up. And I'm just gonna take this wide masking tape and I'm gonna tape it around the whole piece. And that'll just keep it in place until the glue dries. And I'm just pressing the tape onto the uh, glass there, adding my third piece of tape. I just want it to be stable and keep the glass beads where they need to be. Just pressing it in. So this is a few hours later. Now I really should have waited overnight, but as you'll see, you'll see what happens. So just make sure once you put the tape on, if you're only using E6000 to wait overnight. So like I said, this was a few hours later and look at that. See that one popped off. And then, oh, well, look at that. Almost a whole row of them came off. So that's five more that came off. So six total. So I'm gonna have to put these back on and I should have just left them on. Well, I'm adding more glue to them. And I could have just left them on the tape there, put the glue on, and then picked the whole thing up and put it around the glass. But I wasn't smart enough to do that, so I do them individually. You know what they say about work smarter, not harder? Well... I tend to work harder, not smarter. So you'll see me do each one one at a time. Really didn't have to do that. But there I go. See, another one fell off again. <laughs> they just keep falling off because the glue isn't stable yet. So I'm going to have to put the tape back on. I'm just pressing all the glass pieces on, make sure it's right. And now I'm going to put the tape back on. 
So it's mostly just that bottom part there that we need to tape up. I don't know if I taped the whole thing or not. I might. The top part would have been drier because, uh, you know, it was the first part that we glued on. So there it is. And I did make another one that's blue and green. And you'll see that in the very last photo. Now we're going to go on with a lighted bottle. So I got this bottle from the Dollar Tree. It has this little cork plastic looking piece. Actually, cork looking, but it's plastic and it has some fairy lights on it. So I'm just untangling the fairy lights and I'm going to stick them down in the bottle. And then I take the end of a, a long paintbrush and push the, some of the lights down towards the bottom there. And there it is. Let's turn that off and we'll get started putting our little glass pieces on. Now I'm going to go down the seam of the bottle, just the uh, fullest part of the bottle there. And I am, I did get smart. Look at that. I got smart. I'm using E6000 and hot glue. So these are the gems we'll be using. Again, these are flat back, um, the round glass pieces. A friend of mine gave me these. So I'm just going to start off putting some down the line of the seam. So there you see me using the hot glue and the E6000. So I'm just going to make a line down the seam of the bottle there. And I'm not going to do the top portion. I'm just going to do that wider portion there. And when I first started doing this, I didn't think I was going to cover the whole bottom portion. I thought I was just going to do some here and there. And that's why I go to the other side and put another line of the glass beads on. But that's not what I end up doing. So here's the other side, the, the line down the bottle there. And I'm going to be placing these gems along that line. But... Like I said, I do the whole bottle, and if you're going to do the whole bottle, don't do it like this. Do it like we did our last, um, well, not exactly the way we did our last one. Once you get that first line going down, then you just take the gems in between where two gems are and start another line. And then just work your way down. So at this point, this is where I decide, well, you know what? I should just do the whole thing around. Well, I should have done it a little different, but it still works out. So for the next line going down, these go in between where two of them are together. And I'll show you that here in a second. Or not. Maybe I'll show you once I get the line going down. There we go. See how it's in between? So we're just going to continue with our line going down. I just wanted to give you some ideas on how to use these glass gems because, you know, I need to do something with them myself. I have a whole ton of them that were given to me and I feel like I need to use them. So there might be some videos, some more videos later on uh, some more ideas or uses for these. Mm -hmm. Just going to start another row. And you want to put your E6000 on first and then your hot glue. And you don't want them to touch. And once that hot glue, I don't know about yours, but once mine hit the glass, it was stuck. It was on there. It wasn't coming off. Unless you worked it off. So 
So here I am where the two sides meet and I'm just trying to fill in the middle there. You wouldn't need to do this until the very end if um, you just made one strip down the bottle and then just continued with the next strip and the next one and the next one instead of going down one side and then the other side. You don't want to do that if you're going to cover the whole bottom part of the bottle. I mean, this still worked out, but it would have been easier the other way. I'm just going to add some down towards the bottom of the bottle there. Put one up top because it didn't exactly work out the way I wanted it to. So I have to improvise. There we go. We have all but one row on there. So we're going to fill in that row. And again, this didn't work out exactly the way it should have and would have if you did it the correct way, but I made it work. So again, just start with one row and then do your in-betweens with the next row and your in-betweens and just keep going. Don't do one side and then the other side. I think I have just one more to add on to you and then I got to find just the correct one that's going to go in that space. So I try several different ones until I find the right one. Okay, it looks like I found it. So I'm going to glue it on and then this one should be done. And as you can see, these are not falling off. There it is with the light on, the fairy lights. I'm going to turn the light off there. You can see it. Isn't it pretty? I like how it shimmers, shimmers and shines. There it is. There's my lighted bottle. So we'll go on to our next one, which is a swirl decor piece. So I have this decor piece that I got from Pop Shelf. It was 90% off because it was Christmas. So I paid 40 cents for this little box. 40 cents, guys. So it was only my second time being in that store and it was pretty cool. She was uh, putting all the Christmas items in one particular area and had a sign up that said 90% off. And I'm like, whoa, I'm all over that one. And I picked up a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to use a piece of scrapbooking paper. And I thought this would be the best way to figure out, you know, how to cut it to fit the inside. But... This wasn't exactly a good example of that. I should have just measured from the beginning. So the inside is seven inches by seven inches. 
And when I finally do realize that and I cut it down, I actually cut it down right at seven inches and you should leave a little bit around it. So if you have a piece like that and you measure the inside, just give yourself probably an eighth of an inch more or a sixteenth of an inch more around the edges when you go to cut it. Because mine did end up being a little tiny bit short and you could see some of that red around the edges. And I didn't really like that. So at this point, I had just done it from the back. And of course, it was too big. So I do try to cut it down a little bit more. Still too big. So here's where I decide to get out the measuring tape. Like I said, it measured out at seven by seven. So you really want to give it a little bit more around the edges instead of cutting it right at seven inches because it did end up to being just a tiny bit too short. But we kind of fix that later on, you'll see. There's always ways to fix it. And I didn't want to take it back up. I don't know if you can see the red around the, the edges there, but it was there. And I really didn't want that to be seen. So I'm using my homemade Mod Podge. And I tell you what, if you are not making your own Mod Podge, and you're buying Mod Podge from the store, yeah, you're just spending a lot of money on something that is so easy to make. It is not funny. So if you get like all-purpose school glue or, or I mean the all-purpose Elmer's glue or the Elmer's school glue, either one, and you put a cup of it in a container with a quarter cup of water and you mix it up, that makes Mod Podge. And it's basically just like the matte Mod Podge you would buy at the store. And it's so much cheaper. I mean, it's watered down Elmer's glue. That's all it is. That's my soapbox for today, guys. Save yourself some money. Make your own Mod Podge. I'm just going to line up the edges there and press my fingers around it, make sure it's laying flat. You could use a scraper or a roller or something like that if you have one and you want to use it to make it lay down. I'm just using my finger. And you can see the red there a little bit, but we're going to fix that. So I just have a fan brush and some brown paint and I'm just going to go around the inside edges where you see that red and then make sure that it goes onto the scrapbook and paper and then it'll just kind of shadow it a little bit but it'll look so much better than the red around there. In crafting, there's usually a way to fix the mistakes you make. You could put some ribbon around this. You could put some jute around it. I'm using the paint. I mean, there's several different options. So I'm just using the fan brush because it's, you know, kind of fanned out there and uh, it covers a little more area at, this, at one time. 
but you can use other brushes if you want. So I'm just kind of dabbing in the, the corners there and then bringing my brush out a little bit onto the scrapbook and paper. Not the corners, the edges, the inside edges. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we're going to start with our uh, glass rounds. Now these are a little bit frosted. They're green and uh, they have swirls on the inside. And I'm just showing you I'm going to be using the E6000 along with my hot glue. And I'm just going to take the very first one and I'm going to put it somewhere in the center of this piece. Now it's not exactly in the center, but you could certainly put it in the center. I was just eyeballing it, but evidently my eyeballing is a little off. I really wanted it in the center, but it works out. Now, if this was around Christmas time or something, you could do like a Christmas tree out of these. That would be cool. You could make whatever design you wanted to make. I thought the swirl would just be a cool design to do. So I finally pick it up and see where the hanger is and uh, there it is. So this is the top, which I didn't realize, but that's okay. It's just a swirl, so it'll work anyway. And in my description box, I put the link to my Facebook page if you're interested in going there. And I'll also put links in the description box for items that I like to use, mostly from Amazon, but there are others in there. And um, I will only put links to things that I actually use myself and like. So you might want to check those links out. Some of them uh, will have to do with Cricut 
Some of them don't have anything at all to do with the Cricut. Just things that I like to use. Like the Ladybug Vacuum, the Finger Sander. Uh, my Cropodial, which I've only used a couple times. And then my Miter Shears. And then my silicone mats. Anyway, I have a whole list of stuff. If you guys want to check it out, I put those links in there for you. Like I said, I only put things in there that I actually use and like myself. So that, that uh, glass piece was a little bit too big. So I'm going to find a smaller one and put it in there in that space. Because it was just getting a little too close to the uh, top of the uh, box there or frame whatever you want to call it now you can if you're doing a swirl you can make it as big or as little as you want We're getting close to being done with this one. And then we just have one more DIY left. our last one so we are done with this one there it is and here it is hanging on my wall I think it turned out pretty good what do you guys think let me know in the comments and now for our last DIY, uh, we're going to decorate one of these tall candles from Dollar Tree. So I've had this candle since about the summer of last year. And these are some blue of those glass. I'm going to call them beads. They're not really beads. And then I have my E6000, my hot glue gun, of course my toothpick. And we're just going to kind of do this one the way we did the lighted uh, bottle. So we're going to go down um, the seam here, and that's going to be our first row. And this is how I should have done the bottle once I decided that I was going to cover the whole thing. So the top part of that kind of curves in a little bit. So I'm putting it right on the edge uh, where it's still straight. Now, the bottom bead on this, or the bottom glass piece there, does hang over a little bit. So you want to make sure that um, all your rows that are like this, they're going to hang over a little bit, or else your candle is going to be lopsided. And you don't want that, because if you uh, light it, 
then there's a possibility it could fall over and catch your house on fire. And we don't want that. You could uh, leave that last bead off if you want. But I just made sure every other row had a bead that hung down approximately the same amount so that it was stable. You don't want it wonky. So this is our third row we're working on here. Got it done. Got the fourth row done. Fifth row. Yeah, I think we're on the, we just finished the fifth row there. Now I decide I want to add a little bit, um, another bead at the top. You don't have to do that. You can leave that. There it is. Working on it. And it does make this piece pretty heavy too. So these glass beads are heavy. Especially when you got a bunch of them on a piece. So there we have it all done and I'm just adding one to the top there. I'm just making it kind of hang over the edge there at the top just like it is at the bottom. But you can see or maybe you can't see it's a little wonky on the bottom there. So what I need to do is take that smaller bead off and boy was it hard to get off. I had to get out my Cricut tool tried the toothpick but that wasn't working and I thought well I could just leave it that way but then I was like no you know I see disaster happening so I didn't want to do that so I got my Cricut tool out and I took that smaller bead off and then I found a larger one And I'm going to add it to the bottom. So that should take care of it. There it is. See that? No wobble. It's good. There it is. I didn't light it. Let me know in the comments if you might make some of these. And here's the pictures of all of them. And as you can see in the top left picture, I did do a green and a blue one up there. So uh, which one do you like best? I think I like the very first one I did. Again, I'm Liz with Liz's Crafts. And if you like what you see, please think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. And if you know others that like these kind of crafts, please feel free to share my videos.